Paladins are most known for their loyalty, honor, and uncompromising defense. But their unbreakable shields don't tell the full story. They've got swords too, and they're very good at using them. Final Fantasy XIV's Paladin is the simplest tank to pick up and play, but it has a robust moveset that can trip up even experienced players if you don't take the time to learn about all its moving pieces. Today we're going to learn about those moving pieces in my level 80 Paladin overview. Let's get started. Instead of talking about the Paladin's combat rotation first, we're going to talk about its defenses. Unlike the other tanks, Paladin uses a shield, so in addition to parrying physical attacks to reduce damage taken by 15%, they can block physical and magical attacks for 20% damage reduction. Blocking can be done passively or actively with the ability Sheltron. Learned at level 35, Sheltron consumes 50 Oath Gauge, the Paladin's primary resource, which we'll talk about soon, and allows you to block all attacks for 6 seconds. Before unlocking the level 74 trait Enhanced Sheltron, the duration is shorter. Sheltron has a 5 second cooldown so it can be used twice in succession if your Oath Gauge is at its maximum capacity of 100. During dungeon pulls you should activate Sheltron as often as possible, but during boss fights make sure to always save at least 50 Oath Gauge for an incoming tank buster. Paladin's Job Gauge is the only one that fills up passively in combat. You generate 5 Oath for every auto attack you land, which means you'll generate 5 Oath every 2.24 seconds while you're within melee range. The Paladin's second resource is MP, which is used for offensive magic, and my favorite ability in the game, Clemency. This 1200 potency heal costs 2000 MP, which means you can cast it 5 times in succession, and additionally Clemency restores to you 50% of the HP restored to a friendly target you heal. Unfortunately, as powerful as this spell is, it's not one that will get used frequently. The reasons being, Clemency interrupts combos and your MP pool is used for part of your offensive rotation. Those two reasons are enough to relegate Clemency to being an emergency tool, but if you're like me, you'll still cast it way more than you need to because it's awesome. In addition to passive blocking, Sheltron, and Clemency, the Paladin has access to the same generic tanking cooldowns that all tanks have. Rampart reduces damage taken by 20% for 20 seconds on a 90 second cooldown, and Sentinel reduces damage taken by 30% for 10 seconds on a 120 second cooldown. Finally, the Paladin has access to the greatest defensive cooldown in the game, Hollowed Ground. On activation, you become immune to most damage for 10 seconds, and this ability has a 420 second cooldown. That's 7 minutes. The Paladin's offensive rotation is rigid, but it's quite a bit longer than what the other tanks have. The Paladin's rotation is divided into two parts, a physical rotation and a magic rotation. The core of the physical damage rotation is a damage buff called Fight or Flight that increases physical damage dealt by 25% for 25 seconds, and a 1-2-3 combo that restores MP with the second hit of the combo. This combo has two enders, Goring Blade, a moderate damage weapon skill that applies a strong damage over time effect, and Royal Authority, a high damage weapon skill that grants you three stacks of a buff called Sword Oath, which lasts for 15 seconds. While you have Sword Oath, you can use the high damage weapon skill Atonement. Atonement interrupts combos on use, and Sword Oath has a relatively short duration, so you always want to spend your three stacks as soon as you get them. In addition to those core skills, Paladin has an AoE damage over time ability called Circle of Scorn that should be used every time it's available, and a moderate damage single target ability called Spirits Within that also restores MP. Finally, just like the other tanks, Paladin has an area damage rotation that consists of Total Eclipse and Prominence. All of this MP restoration is to prepare you for your magic damage rotation. The magic damage rotation uses an ability called Requiescat and the spells Holy Spirit or Holy Circle for single targets and AoE damage respectively, and the finisher ability Confetior. All of these spells cost 2000 MP. Requiescat is a 550 potency attack that makes your spells instant cast and increases attack and healing magic potency by 50% if activated while your MP is at 80% or higher. When you activate Requiescat, you'll want to spend 8,000 of your MP on Holy Spirit or Circle, then the final 2,000 MP on Confetior. Something important to note about Requiescat and your magic damage rotation is, this is the most stress-free time you can cast Clemency. Your spells aren't part of a combo system, so casting Clemency instead of Holy Spirit won't send your entire rotation out of whack. It'll just cost you some damage. 
With all of that said, now you know everything you'd need to play the Paladin. Its kit is very straightforward, and it doesn't take much to learn and master it. However, understanding the fundamentals of tanking, namely when to use cooldowns, how to mitigate tank busters, how to position enemies, tank swapping, and off-tanking, will see your performance increase. The last thing to mention before we close out are the Paladin's support-oriented abilities. The Paladin has more support abilities than what the other tanks have access to, which makes it a phenomenal choice for an off-tank, arguably the best. You can spend 50 Oath Gauge on the abilities Cover and Intervention. Cover allows you to divert all damage taken from a party member to you for 12 seconds. The target must be within 10 meters. Intervention reduces the party member's damage taken by 10% for 6 seconds, but the effect can be enhanced. If Rampart or Sentinel are active at the time of activating Intervention, the damage reduction is increased by 50% of the active ability's effect. Activating Intervention while Rampart is active increases the damage reduction to 20%, and activating Intervention while Sentinel is active increases the damage reduction to 25%. During 8-man trials or raids, use Intervention to bolster the main tank's defenses during tank busters. Divine Veil is raid-wide mitigation. On activation, a buff is applied to yourself. Upon having your HP recovered by a healing magic spell cast by you or a party member, a barrier will spread to all nearby party members totaling 10% of your maximum HP. The barrier lasts for 30 seconds. Last but certainly not least is Passage of Arms. This channeled ability lasts for 18 seconds and increases your block rate to 100%. It also creates an area behind you and all allies standing within the area take 15% less damage. The chances for you to use Passage of Arms are few and far between, but if you're in a dungeon pool and you've run out of all your other cooldowns, activate Passage of Arms and tank as much damage as you can. And there we go, that's gonna do it for the overview of the Paladin. This is without a doubt the easiest tank to play, so it might seem like I'm stating the obvious in my overview, but everything about the Paladin's kit is pretty obvious. When you're taking a lot of damage, use Rampart or Sentinel. When a tank buster is coming, activate Sheltron for a guaranteed block. And if the tank buster does a lot of damage, you can stack Sheltron with Rampart or Sentinel. If you know the area damage rotation of a boss, you can apply Divine Veil to protect your teammates. And in between all of that, chop enemies with your sword and show them the light with Holy Spirit and Confetior. Before we close out completely, I'd like to give a special shout out again to my Patreon supporters. We've got Avi, Joseph, the Mac Man, Kunaka, Algino, Olivia, and of course Tobias. But they are also being joined by four new patrons. Alfred F, Alfred M, Ronaldo, and Jay, thank you so much for your patronage. It legitimately brings tears to my eyes to receive this much extra support. It's incredible. And I'll say again, it lets me know that I'm doing the right thing and that my content is being enjoyed. So with all of that said, if you'd like to support the channel more than you already do just by watching, liking, subscribing, and commenting, feel free to head over to patreon.com slash iBlueRJGR to become a patron. As always, the name of the game is Final Fantasy XIV, the name of the channel is iBlueRJGR, thank you for watching, don't forget to cast Clemency, and I'll see you next time.